Hello and welcome. Today we're working on a Monte Carlo simulation in Excel for a 30-year portfolio. So that means we're going to estimate a 30-year return on a portfolio and see what the growth would be. And then we're going to run that portfolio simulation a thousand times to figure out, well, what is the best case scenario? What's the average scenario and the mean and median? And what is a worst case scenario? So here's what it would look like. I've got one completed here. We'll have beginning assumptions. We'll have uh, the mean and the median and then percentiles. Because what we're going to do is estimate a 30-year portfolio and then run that 30-year portfolio a thousand times. So let's get started. If you're new, my name's Jeff from Finally Learn. And I teach using Excel a lot of financial skills. So join us on the channel. Subscribe and like if this is helpful for you. So I have some data back from 1974 to 2023, where we have the S&P 500 had an 11% compounded annual growth rate or annualized return. And the standard deviation is the measure of risk, shows how much distribution there might be in the returns. And that's 17.8 or 17.1 or 17.2. And then we have T-bonds, that have less return and less risk. So let's get started and show how we should do this. We're gonna set up assumptions. And so I just copied and got rid of the data here, but here's what we wanna do. We wanna have beginning investment, and let's say our beginning investment is $1,000. I've already formatted that for dollars. And our annual investment is, let's say we can put in $200 a month or 2,400. And we think our annual return is going to be about 10%. And our standard deviation is going to be about 18%. That's the measure of risk. And we'll do this for 30 years. All right, so one thing we can calculate is our total investment. Our total investment starts with a 1,000 plus it does 30 years times the 2,400. So we're going to calculate and figure out, well, what's our total investment? Our total investment looks like it's 73,000. Now, we're going to assume that the return is not 10% each year, every year. We're going to assume that our portfolio returns are in a normal distribution and the annual mean, the return mean is 10% with a standard deviation of 18%. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do 30 year return, and then we're going to estimate that 30 year return another 1000 times. All right. So here's how we get started. So on year one, put one, and I'm not going to type one, two, three, all the way through 30. There's an easy way to do it in Excel. Let me show you how this works. So I'm going to select the one. I'm going to the home ribbon. I'm going to this drop down the fill. I'm going to select a series. I want to put a column here from 1 through 30. So my step value is 1. I have 1. I'm going to add 1 to it. And I want it to stop when it gets to 30. So here we have 1 through 30. And it's easy to do that rather than typing in 1 through 30. Now our estimated return is going to be within the distribution of 10% mean and 18% standard deviation. So we're going to use a random function. Now a random function will actually pull from 0 to 1. It'll randomize that number. It'll always be a decimal like 0.17 or 0.82. Or really, it goes to uh, several decimals. So it's really 0.4392 or whatever. All right, so we're going to use what's called a, uh, the inverse of the normal cumulative function. So norm.inv normal cumulative function. It's the inverse of that. So we're going to use a random number generator here. So rand, open and close the parentheses. So that'll put a random number there. And the mean is going to be 10%. I'm going to make that an absolute with an F4. And then the standard deviation is going to be 18%. We'll make that also a, a absolute value at 18%. So we wanted to anchor those at 10% and 18%. And we'll now calculate, okay, it pulls a random number 
and then finds that random number within the distribution of the mean and the standard deviation. So we've got 7.07%. Now, I gave a little note at the very top, anytime you hit F9 or anytime you do something else, if I enter anything else, then that number, that estimate changes. So anything we do um, changes those estimates and keeps recalculating those estimates. Now we're gonna do this all the way down. We're gonna double click, send it all the way down to the 30 year. So here is an estimate of what the portfolio would look like for a 30 year portfolio with this annual return, the mean, and this standard deviation. So we're gonna calculate, well, what is the future value after one year? You start with 1,000 and you put in 2,400. So what would that be? We're gonna take the 1,000 times one plus, here this is 26%, but if I hit enter, it'll change, but we wanna put point to that, that return I'm going to close my parentheses and you see it changed to 22.62%. And so therefore it's 1226. The 1000 grew at 22.6%. So you can see it's now 1226. Plus we want to add the amount that we've invested during the year. Now we're making a simple assumption that we're kind of putting in that 2400 at the very end of the period so it doesn't have time to grow, it just adds to that account at the end of year one. So here we go. Now that return changed to 14%. We're gonna see some that are negative and we'll see some that are positive. All right, now uh, we can do the second one and then we'll copy it all the way down. So we need to build the second where we can copy it so we may need to do an absolute address. So we're gonna take the previous number times one plus the 41%. We want to grow it at 41%. Plus we're going to add the 2400. I need to make that absolute F4. So dollar sign C dollar sign five. And so therefore at the end of year two, if we had these returns, then it grows from 3600 to 6500. You're happy because you just started with a thousand you added 2,400 and you added another 2,400. All right, I'm gonna double click all the way down and this portfolio would grow to $2.1 million. Okay, so I'm gonna to point to that. Now, it will change. It won't always be 2.1 million. So I'm gonna say the estimated future value is this number way down here, the 2133. But if I hit enter, it's gonna change that number because all of those estimates have changed. So hit enter, and now it's only, this is a low number, 242,000. The other was 2.1 million, right? So we had a lot more losses in this estimate. So one of the things that happens is we've estimated a 30-year return each of the 30 years we've estimated, but you see we've got some differing results. So if I hit F9 a couple of times, it changes to 215, it changes to 328, it changes to 285, 303, 713 is a big number compared to the, uh, the numbers that we had. All right, so what Monte Carlo simulation does is let's do this a thousand times and then start looking at estimates like mean and median and the five percentile and the 50 percentile and so on. All right, so what we're gonna do on a Monte Carlo simulation, I'm gonna put estimated future value, and I'm just gonna to point to this number right here, the 133. That's the lowest number we've seen so far. So now it just bumped up to 265. So that estimate is volatile because we have a lot of different returns that could happen within each individual year. So our estimated is 265. I'm gonna do the same thing. I wanna do this a thousand times. Now, do you remember how we put the sequence down for a thousand? Well, we're going to the home ribbon and we'll do the fill and we'll do the series. We want a column and we wanna stop at 1,000. We're gonna go up by one at a time. And so now we have, let me look, all the way to a thousand. By the way, if you need to go to the bottom of each column, 
then what you have is you can do command down arrow and you skip down there. I'm on uh, a Mac, so it's command down arrow. If you're on Windows, it's be uh, control and down arrow. And to go back, I'm going to do command and up arrow. That puts me at the top of that little table. So I've got one through a thousand, so I need to figure out a way to simulate this. Now, this sounds like it's really complicated, but you want to tell Excel, hey, look, do this one portfolio and do it a thousand times. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to highlight this, and I need to select this entire column of a thousand, a thousand different rows. I'm going to do Command Shift Down. If you're on Windows, it'd be Control Shift Down. I'm going to go to the data ribbon and this what if analysis. I'm going to do data table. And so what it says is I want to put, I have numbers in a column and I want to put um, recalculate this one, two, three, a thousand times. But I don't want to use any, I'm not using any input. So I just need to select out of this table somewhere, just some random cell that's blank. I'm going to use that as my input cell and hit OK. Now we're not going to see anything for just a minute, but I'm going to scroll and you're going to see that these numbers are filled in. All right, so what it's done, it's calculated that 24, uh, 246,000, it's calculated that a thousand times. So I'm going to highlight this entire column, Command Shift down or Control Shift down if you're on Windows. I'm going to go to home and we'll put dollar sign and I don't think I need the pennies, right? They're, they're big numbers. So if you go down, then here are all the different, look, one of them is 90,000 and one is 82,000, but one is 1,485,000. So we were getting, because we have a big standard deviation, then we're getting lots of different results. Now, here's what I want to do. I, one thing I want to do that's going to make our, my, our life a real easy on doing the summary is we're going to name this entire 1,000 simulations. We're going to name it. So it's going to be a named range. So I'm going to do Command Shift Down or you can do Control Shift Down if you're on Windows. And right here to the left of the formula bar, I want to call this um, Simulations. In fact, let me call it Sims. How about that? Can I call this Sims? And we know that's the, the 1,000 different options. Okay, so now I've called that a named range. So we're really close to finishing, and we've got 1,000 different estimates or 1,000 different simulations on this little portfolio. Now, we can do what is the average or the mean the average, and I can just call it Sims. Do you see that? I had a previous example where I called it Sims 1000, but here we just called it Sims. I'm going to close parentheses. So the mean or the average value of all those is 400,000. Now, if I hit F9, you see those numbers will change a little bit, but the mean of 1000 doesn't change as much as the actual estimated future value. Do you see that number was? We saw a number a little bit ago of 90,000 or 80,000. Now it's 1.2, almost 1.3 million. We can do the same thing for median. Median here, and I'm just going to call it Sims, right? There it is. That's what I call that little range. We'll do the same thing for the, um, the percentiles. What would be the number that would put you in the bottom 5%? Okay, well, that's where we don't want to be. The bottom 5%, we're going to use a function called percentile inclusive. So it includes that 5%. And we're going to point to the array sims. And then we'll point to the 5%. So what number puts you in the bottom 5%? Anything at 119, 280 or below puts you in the bottom 5%. Well, what about the other ones? Well, if we did, if we copy this down, because Sims, let's look what we have. Sims is an absolute address, and we want the 95 percentile. So if, you, if you're in the bottom 25%, you'd be at 202, 517, or lower. 
If you're exactly at 50%, that's exactly the median. Do you see that? 326,000. Now watch, you only invested 73 and the mean of that is 326. If you do better than the average, you're at the 75 percentile, well, it'd be 509,000 and the top 5% are above 957,000. Now we understand there's randomness that happens in the stock market in investing. And so um, this helps us see the idea of return and risk. So let's calculate based on this. Let's calculate our compounded annual growth rate. And we can do it for all of them uh, pretty quickly. So this is going to be the rate function. So I'm going to just do it this way, the rate function. Now I need the number of periods is 30. I'm going to make that an absolute F4. My payment is going to be now, because I'm paying the payment and I'm paying the present value, I'm receiving the future value. One thing that happens on Excel in financial calculations or on a financial calculator, you've got to make um, some negative and some positive present value and future value are opposite signs. So I'm paying a payment of $2,400 every year. So I need to make that absolute. And my present value, I put in out of my pocket a negative 1,000. I want to make that absolute F4. And my future value then, I'm receiving the 401. And so I'm going to let it calculate. My return is 10.09%. Now, I had formatted already for percentages. So if it came out as a number like this, then you just have to calculate percentage or format for percentage, and I do two decimal places. Now, we should be able to copy this all the way down, get rid of the one here in the middle that doesn't have one. So in the, the median, you're getting about an 8.72% return. The bottom 5%, you got a 3% return. And then the, the median here is 8.72. Like we said, the median is 50 percentile. The top 5%, they made a little bit more. They made a 14% return. Now, everything is built in this whole spreadsheet on these initial numbers. And I'm not really changing the 30 years because I kind of have a static um, table here. In fact, we can clean it up a little bit. We can go down and make this where we have borders all the way around. We can go here. Command shift down and select a thousand real quickly and it makes it look very nice. Now let's change our initial investment. Let's say you start, you got to start with $5,000 and you said, I'm going to put in $500 a month. That's 6,000 a year, 500 times 12 months, 6,000 a year. And your return is 10% or 18% standard deviation. Then the median is going to be uh, much higher you know, 854,000 similar returns in terms of compounded annual growth rate. So you can play with this and figure out, well, what if my return, I'm worried about my return is going to be 8%, but still 18%. Then you can see, cause you're running a thousand different portfolios over the 30 year time, time frame. So one thing you can do is adjust the beginning investment, adjust the return, adjust the standard deviation, and then it all recalculates. So if you kept doing F9, then you'll see over time things change a little bit, but the mean or median for a thousand simulation is not as volatile as just that one estimate of future value.